What do we see in this clip? Right. It's two appendix. It's, uh, it's an alien. It's an alien. It's an alien. It's an alien. It's it has two, two appendix. No appendix. It. How are we going to do? <laughs> right. So you want to follow um, the the two suspicious lesions. It could be that it's coiling on on one on itself. So you're cutting the appendix at a particular angle where you're seeing kind of um, the appendix at two different areas, um, or it could be another area of inflamed bowel that you want to just follow. Oh, it's coiling around. Well. It's coiling around like um, like a C. Oh, so another area that um, makes the appendicitis scan challenging is that it could be perforated, in which case um, you may not see the appendix. So um, we know that perforated appendicitis is more common in younger children, less than eight, um, compared to older children, because they typically have more atypical presentations. Um, so Bloomfield et al. in 2000 um, wanted to highlight some of the features that would uh, be suggestive of perforated appendicitis. So they found that abscess, if you see it, would be suggestive with a specificity of 99%. If you lose the echogenic submucosal layer, it has a sensitivity of 100%, um, and the presence of an apodicolith has a specificity of 92% as well. Um, this was further confirmed by two Okay, so um, what sometimes makes um, appendicitis uh, such a challenging scan is that it may be perforated, in which case you won't see the appendicitis itself. Um, and we know that it's more common in young children. So. Um, in less than eight, um, they 62% uh, with present with perforated appendicitis versus older kids, uh, older than eight years old, would present 29% um, of the time with perfed api. And so Bloomfeld et al. in tw 2000 set out to uh, try to um, classify the findings that would be suggestive of perforated appendicitis. Um, so they found that um, if you see an abscess, the specificity um, is 99% for perfed api. If you have loss of echogenic submucosal layers, the sensitivity is up to 100%. If you see the presence of an apodicolith, the specificity is also 92%. I think Mark always quote another study that found that below the age of five, if you see an appendicolith, they found that it is 100% specific for perfect. Right. Um, and so Chulin Silver in 2015 um, confirmed those findings and also concluded that when there's a constellation of dilated bowel loops, um, right lower quadrant echogenic fat and complex fluid, then the specificity is up to 99% in a diagnosis of perfect appendicitis. Um, and so they also highlight this finding of increased paraportal echogenicity. Um, that would suggest inflammation. So uh, as you can see on the right of the screen there, when there's um, lots of um, bright hyperechogenic areas that could suggest inflammation. Other secondary findings could be free fluid in the abdomen. So this is a different probe, but just to illustrate that um, you can often see free fluid if it's perfed. Here's an example of what a complex intra-abdominal fluid would look like. And here, what are we trying to illustrate? Yeah, yeah it's quite a large, enlarged appendix. And fat stranding. And there's also looking like it's starting to develop a phlegmon. You don't really see the tip, it's probably perforated and a phlegmon is developing. So here's to illustrate the measurement that's uh, up to a centimeter. And then now I wanna enter a second session where um, we go through a series of cases. I have about 13 clips where um, I'm gonna have you 13. guys. 13, yeah. Um, and we're going to make it into a game. So those of you that are joining in on the um, on Google Hangout can also um, just um, keep track of your own score as well. So each case is going to have two marks. So one for Appy or no Appy. We're going to do a discussion on the, the first 
or the first one to show. So for people here, we're going to split you into two teams, Magali and Pezzo, and then Magali with Alana, Pezzo with um, with Alexandra. Right. And uh, we're just going to go back and forth between the two teams. Okay, and then for the marks, so each case, um, the first point is going to be API or no API. Second point is going to be um, the specific finding that we're trying to highlight for that case, or like a teaching point. Sounds good. Okay, so... We're going to start with um, Alana and, and Magali's team with case one. Happy, no happy. So that is definitely pretty good. Yeah. So abnormal, right? So you, yeah, abnormal. So first point, second point is what are we trying to, what's the teaching point that we're trying to highlight with this case? So that we can look at the lateral part of the psoas. Right. It's a retrocycle. Yeah, so it's retrocycle, it's lateral to the psoas. So it's not that nice, beautiful draping over the iliac vessel that we typically expect. Um, so this is just to remind you that you should really look around that whole right lower quadrant. So full points so far for Magali's team. Pezzo's team. Yeah. That's an happy. Okay, so first point, yes, happy. Second point, what is it trying to highlight? It's trying to highlight that it's a subapathic happy because I think we're very up in the right upper quadrant and we can see it scroll around so we can see like the two happy and we see the pink and mesenteric fat around it. Right. And exactly. I'm cheating because I remember this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you joining that may not have heard Pezzo's mumbling, <laughs> he's saying that there's definitely appendicitis, so abnormal scan. And this case is trying to highlight that um, in addition to you know different positions in the right lower quadrant, it can sometimes sit in different quadrants in the abdomen. So this is a subhepatic um, append uh, appendicitis. So important to um, look thoroughly um, in that whole area. Okay, back to Alana. What is this case? Appy, no appy. Yeah. Appy. Okay, good. And what's the second, what are we trying to highlight here? That bowel can look like Right. So the appendicitis is not actually that um, longitudinal yeah. tubular stri um, structure that you see lying on top of the psoas. That's probably the terminal ilium. What is the appendicitis? It's actually to the left of that structure, that circle coming in right now. Mm -hmm. That, um, that, tubu uh, that um, circular lesion that has um, some thickened mesenteric fat around it, the wall is thickened, and um, if you try to compress on it, it's probably going to be non-compressible. So this is an appendicitis, and it's trying to highlight that um, it can be sometimes confused with the terminal ileum. So you really want to follow the structures that you're um, suspicious about, um, and then check for those secondary things: compressibility. Um, does it is it an end? Um, is it a blind end? Um, and you really want to distinguish between the um, TI. From, a, a, from the appendix.